In this video, I'm going to share my personal home workout routine designed to build muscle with minimal amounts of weight or equipment. It consists of short but intense 30 to 45 minute workouts just two to three times per week. Now, because of the pandemic, I've not actually been to a commercial gym in nearly 12 months. So I've been doing what I can from home, doing bodyweight workouts, doing lots of high volume training, which is fine for kind of maintaining your condition or even building fitness, but not great when it comes to building muscle. So I created a new plan for myself using the basic equipment that I have at home and I've been really pleased with the progress I've made. In fact, I've made more progress in the last eight weeks than I have in the previous 10 months. So in this video, I'm going to share everything with you from the key principles and science as to why the program structured the way that it is, a complete breakdown and demonstration of all the different exercises and even how to properly track and monitor your progress. This video is split into chapters and there's timestamps in the description below so you can jump ahead to different parts of the video. There's also a link to equipment and Google spreadsheets that you can copy so you've got everything that you need to start the program. There's even a link to a supporting blog post to give you way more supporting information. The first thing to talk about is all the equipment you need. You're going to need some space to train but not a huge amount. I literally commandeer a corner section of my conservatory at home and sometimes even train around kids' toys. You're going to need some dumbbells that have adjustable weights. They don't need to be fancy ones like mine, any spin lock or clip dumbbells will work fine. Resistance bands make up a big part of the program. I recommend some really strong, heavy duty bands that not only offer a lot of resistance but are also reassuringly unlikely to snap. I use these bands by Fitbeast and they are very versatile for home workouts. You're going to need a pull-up bar. Again, mine is kind of fancy, but any basic bar or frame that you can put in a doorway will work just fine. Ideally, you would have some way of performing dips. I have some bars that I can attach to my pull-up frame, but you could use two chairs, a bench, or even just the end of your sofa or bed. Finally, a bench is useful, but not necessary. If you have one, then great. If not, you can work around it. The program is based crudely around principles of high intensity training, popularized by people such as Arthur Jones, Mike Mensah, and Dorian Yates, that I have adapted based around my own personal needs and resources. The workouts are short and intense, and as a result, they hurt. You'll likely pull faces like you're trying to win a gurning competition when performing the exercises. There's just one single working set performed for each muscle group, but these are compounded with intensifiers. The idea is to create an acute stress response in the muscles, which sends a signal for growth. But the low volume of the exercises allows for faster recovery so you can train multiple times per week. As with all muscle building programs, the key principle is progressive overload. This means that every week you should be trying to improve either the number of reps you perform, increasing the weight, or even improving your form from the previous week as your body adapts to the training. Initially, this training was quite a shock to my system. So I performed the workout twice per week on a Monday and a Thursday to give myself a chance to recover. After a short time, I then increased this to three times per week, training on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now, most people, including myself, aren't fortunate enough to have a lot of equipment or weights at home. As such, we need to raise the difficulty of exercises using intensifiers. The first way to increase the intensity of an exercise is to pre-exhaust the target muscle group. So for example, before doing chest flies, you would first pre-exhaust the muscles with body weight push-ups. The next way of increasing the intensity is by manipulating the tempo. For most exercises in this program, I use a 4-1-2-0 tempo. Each number in the tempo represents the number of seconds you take to perform that part of the movement. The first number is the eccentric or lowering phase. The second number represents the bottom position of the movement. The third number represents the concentric or lifting phase. And the fourth number represents the time at the top of the movement. Generally speaking, this tempo is considered to be one of the most effective for hypertrophy, which is the increase of muscle mass. The next intensifier is called a finisher. As soon as the working set is complete, another exercise from the same muscle group is performed. For example, after tricep dips, you would perform a set of tricep pushdowns. Next is negative reps. 
These are used to extend a set when you have failed at the concentric part of the movement. For example, if you can no longer perform any more pull-ups, you could jump up to the top of the movement and then just perform the negative phase to further extend the set. The final intensifier is to include a static contraction at the end of a set. This is essentially an isometric hold, which is held until the muscle fails. For example, after performing dumbbell curls, you could hold the weights at 90 degrees until you can no longer maintain that position. These are all the exercises I complete in the program. In the description below, there is a link to a Google Sheet, so you can copy this if you want to try the program for yourself. I'll now go through and explain how I perform the exercises for each muscle group. The first exercise I perform is just a standard push-up. The aim initially is to get the muscles warm and get the blood flowing, so I just use a simple 1-0-1-0 tempo. I perform as many reps as I can, stopping about 2-3 to three reps away from failure. In this case, I performed 40 reps. After about 15 seconds, I then perform the first pre-exhaust exercise. This is again push-ups, but using a 4 2, two zero tempo. I normally perform about 8 to 10 reps, but stop one rep away from complete failure. For the working set, I perform dumbbell chest flies. The reason I chose flies over a pressing movement is because I wanted an adduction-based movement, but also because of limitations with weight. I can press a lot more weight than I have at home, but with flies, I can lift a lot less. At the point where I reach concentric failure, I press the weights to the top position and perform a few negative reps. Using a resistance band and the door anchor, I'm able to simulate a cable machine for the straight arm pull down pre-exhaust movement. The focus is to tire my lats without tiring my arms ready for the working set. Depending on the resistance of the band, this can be anything from 10 to 20 reps. Using a pull-up bar in my doorway, I include a resistance band to assist with the chin-ups. At a standard 1010 tempo, I can maybe perform 8 to 12 good reps unassisted, but at the 4122 tempo, I would realistically only get three to four reps. The resistance band helps with the weakest part of the movement so I can get between eight to 12 reps at this tempo. Again, when I can no longer complete the concentric phase of the movement, I jump to the top of the bar and perform a few negative reps. The first movement for shoulders is a lateral raise pre-exhaust using a resistance bands. My hands are positioned in such a way that there is constant tension on the deltoids. As soon as I reach concentric failure, I move straight onto the working set. For the dumbbell press, I have to really concentrate to make sure I don't press too quickly as I'm aiming for a two second concentric. If I was doing this with a barbell, I'd probably go much lower at the bottom of the movement, but with the dumbbells, I feel I lose tension in my deltoids, so I go just below parallel. On the last rep, I perform a super slow negative and then hold the weight for as long as I can at the bottom of the movement, and then move straight onto the finisher. For the finisher, it's banded lateral raises again, but this time with a slightly lighter band, I'm just trying to make sure it's the shoulders that are completely fatigued. For the second back set, I start with a seated row as a pre-exhaust movement. Using my strongest resistance band, I loop the band around my feet and use a tempo of 4-1-2-2 and really try and squeeze with my back. I normally perform between 8 to 12 reps on this before moving on to the working set. The working set is a bent over dumbbell row. The main focus is to pull with my elbows and not my arms to keep my back engaged throughout the movement.
At this stage, my triceps are already quite fatigued, so I'll go straight into the working set of dips. They normally shake quite a lot, but again, I'm aiming for eight to 12 good reps, matching the tempo as closely as I can. At the point of failure, I take a quick 10 second rest, and then I'm able to perform two more reps, including a slower negative on the final rep. As soon as I finished, I move straight onto the tricep pushdowns. Depending on how I feel, I sometimes include some additional negative reps at the end of this set. Although my biceps have been worked in some of the pulling movements, I've noticed it's my forearms that seem to fail first during curls. As such, I perform some band hammer curls to help pre-exhaust the biceps before the working set, maintaining constant tension throughout the movement. For the main curls, I normally use an attachment on my bench to perform a preacher curl, but for this example, I'm doing standing bicep curls. On the final rep, I use momentum to cheat to get to the top of the movement, but again perform a slower negative and a bit of an isometric hold. As soon as the dumbbells hit the ground, I then move on to the banded reverse curls to completely exhaust the biceps. In order to pre-exhaust the legs, I perform a squat complex, normally totaling around 50 reps. The first 20 reps are standard bodyweight squats at a quick tempo. The next 10 reps are one and a quarter squats. This is where you move approximately a quarter of the way up from the bottom of the movement, but then return to the bottom and then complete the full movement to the top. At this point, I can feel a nice buildup of lactic acid in my legs, and the next 10 reps using the 4120 tempo really add to this fire. As soon as these reps are complete, I then perform 10 jump squats. And then finally, I end the complex with an isometric hold. This can be anything from 20 seconds to a minute. For the working set, I find it's best to use single leg movements to make up for the lack of weight combined with the slow tempo. As such, the split squat works great for this. You can do it standing as I am here, or you can place your back leg on a bench. Each week, I alternate which leg starts first, so I'm not favoring one leg over the other. I perform about 20 reps on each side, but normally stop at form failure. A lot of people neglect hamstrings when creating home workouts if you don't have a leg curl attachment for their bench. Although they've been worked with the split squat, some direct work is definitely beneficial. I start by pre-exhorting them using a resistance band during a standing curl. I keep my leg quite far behind me to try and maintain tension even at the bottom of the movement. For the main movement, I have been experimenting with single leg stiff leg deadlifts. However, my balance isn't good enough to perform this well enough, so I just perform a standard stiff leg deadlift movement, again aiming for around 20 reps. For calves, you will need a slightly raised platform to get a good stretch at the bottom of the movement. I found a thick book is normally good enough to do the job. As with the other leg movements, I start with a pre-exhaust that uses both legs at the same time and then move on to a single leg movement. With the calf raises, I use a super slow tempo of 4124. I try to really squeeze the calves at the top of the movement with a slow eccentric I do this until I feel the calves start to cramp, which can be anywhere between 20 and 40 reps. At this point, I then move on to single leg calf raises with weight, again, maintaining that same tempo and alternating which leg starts first.
To end the session, I also have a quick high intensity interval training session to finish off my legs. This is optional, not just because it's an extra exercise, but also because I have access to an exercise bike with magnetic resistance that many don't. Essentially, I set up an interval program lasting anything from three to seven minutes, depending on how I feel. Each week, I try to increase the time, distance, calories, or watts. I find it very, very hard after the leg workout, and it really provides a massive pump in your legs. You need to track your progress to ensure that you are improving and following the principles of progressive overload. So this could be by increasing the weight or reps, improving your form or whatever it may be to increase the overall intensity. When it comes to tracking my workouts, I record everything using Google Sheets. So here you can see my latest training block. Each block consists of two weeks of workouts. And the reason for that is simply down to my own personal OCD. I like to see all my data on the screen without having to horizontally scroll, but you can record your workouts in bigger blocks if you prefer. At the bottom here, you can see the different worksheets I have, again, all split into two week blocks. Now, because there is only one working set for each exercise, tracking the weight and reps in the columns is easy to do. When it comes to recording your data, it doesn't really matter how you do it, so long as you know what it means. For example, I use color references when referring to my use of resistance bands. I put negative reps or rest pause reps in brackets. When I change the tempo of an exercise, I use a forward slash. As long as you standardize how you do it, you can really record it however you wish. This template is available as a link below in the description. So if you want to try the program, you can just copy and paste this document and then fill it in however you wish. So if you do want to try this program, you should now have everything you need to get started. A lot of time has gone into making this. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and let me know in the comments below if you're going to try it.